Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Climate experts tell us that global warming causes both warmer winters and colder winters. Two years ago, National Geographic explained why a warming Arctic may be causing colder U.S. winters, and they used a picture of a calving glacier as evidence of Arctic warming. Calving is what happens when a glacier reaches the sea. It's evidence that the glacier is growing, not shrinking. But the days when National Geographic knew what they were talking about are long since gone. Two years ago was the coldest New Year's Eve on record in the eastern half of the United States. I took this picture on January 8, 2018. Temperatures had gotten down pretty close to 0 F, minus 18 C, the night before, and people were playing hockey in front of the Capitol building. Then I had the pleasure of spending the spring of 2018 in Philadelphia, which was their coldest and snowiest spring on record. But fast forward two years to January 2020, and the Philadelphia Inquirer says that record-breaking January heat brings happiness and concerns about climate change. So the cold winter of 2018 was caused by global warming, and the warm winter of 2020 was also caused by global warming. If global warming causes both warm winters and cold winters, I have to wonder what global cooling would look like. And then at the bottom of the article it says, it could be nearly 70 degrees in Philadelphia this weekend, what happened to January? Wow, 70 degrees in Philadelphia in January? We've really messed up the climate with our SUVs. I wonder if they've ever had 70 degrees in Philadelphia in January before. Let's take a look now at the history books. A Philadelphia doctor named Charles Pierce took very detailed records of Philadelphia weather from 1790 until 1847. Here's what he wrote about January 1790, which was George Washington's first month in office as president. January 1790, the average or medium temperature of this month was 44 degrees. This is the mildest month of January on record. Fogs prevailed very much in the morning, but a hot sun soon dispersed them, and the mercury often ran up to 70 degrees in the shade at midday. Boys were often seen swimming in the rivers. There were frequent showers as in April, some of which were accompanied by thunder and lightning. The uncommon mildness of the weather continued until the 7th of February. It sounds like January 1790 was a lot warmer than January of 2020. Yet carbon dioxide levels were down around 280 parts per million. Nine of the 25 deadliest Atlantic hurricanes occurred right around the time of the Revolutionary War, including one in 1790 which killed more than 2,000 people. So that period had the warmest January on record and also had a record number of deadly hurricanes. And Bernie Sanders wants to spend $14 trillion in a hopeless attempt to take us back to the safe climate of 1790. Anyway, back to the more recent past. In 2006, the New York Times announced the endless summer. They said it was one of the signs of global warming and goes hand in hand with polar bears dying in the Arctic as the sea ice shrinks. But four years later in 2010, the New York Times blamed global warming for the cold weather. And the New York Times did the same thing in 1996, blaming global warming for the record blizzard. Carbon dioxide appears to have magical powers. Sometimes it makes the atmosphere warm, and sometimes it makes the atmosphere cold. I took this picture of Toto hiking on frozen Chesapeake Bay on March 7, 2015. I've been told by Washington weather expert Andy Weiss that this was probably the first time Chesapeake Bay was frozen in March since the 18th century. The reality is that the frequency of warm winter days in the United States has been declining for a century. The winter of 1930 had the most 60 degree days and the winter of 2010 had the fewest. There was a sharp decline in the number of 60 degree winter days in the U.S. after the 1950s and we never recovered. This decline in winter temperatures goes hand in hand with increasing winter snow cover. Winter snow cover has been increasing in the northern hemisphere for 50 years, with the last 20 years having the highest average snow extent on record. The reason this is happening is because Arctic air is moving further and further south in the winter time, causing the freeze line to move closer to the equator. But never mind actual facts, climate alarmists have an agenda which they need to maintain. They blame global warming for everything, but seem to have no clue what's actually going on around them. Anyway, I'm going to finish this video up with a clip of Toto celebrating the first day of spring in Philadelphia in 2018.
There's nothing like the sights and smells of spring. Please visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.